this Sunday, I want to welcome those who are joining with us this morning by YouTube, and we trust that the ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you as we endeavor to minister the Word of the Lord this morning as we have been directed by the Holy Spirit. I want you, saints, to welcome those who are joining with us by YouTube by giving a good hand clap this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Last Sunday I started after my sabbatical, and I got another sabbatical coming up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I, my, my subject this morning is, this is the second part of it, the day of advantage is here. I want this body, and I say this body, but I want to be able to bring us to a place of faith and understanding to where we know that we have authority as individual members of the body of Christ. Yes. Every member of the body of Christ have authority. Yes, that's right. Because we're dealing with demonic spirits and the authority that we have in the name of Jesus and through the knowledge of the word of God gives us the ability to deal with circumstances that comes about as a result of the work of Satan. Right. Amen. Amen. So I want you to know that <clears throat> you have authority. Amen. You can, so to speak, stand on your own two feet. Amen. And yet, you can have someone to agree with you. Yes. There is a place for agreement. Yes. Amen. Amen. But don't, don't, don't fail to realize that you as a member of the body, have authority. Amen. Now, if you don't have authority, how are you going to deal with the enemy right. in your personal life? Yes. We have been taught uh, too long that really the only person in the body of Christ that has authority is the preacher. Mm -hmm. And the body went, and, and there is a place for that. Don't misunderstand me. And when we wanted something to happen, when we wanted to get something from God, we went to the preacher. Amen. And we asked him or her to pray for us. Amen. 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 Yes. And many times we didn't get it. Right. Right. Amen. Yes. Many times we didn't get it. Because... <laughs> In some places, people, you, some places, nobody could lay hands on the people but the preacher. Amen. Amen. But what does the scripture say? Everybody say, what does the scripture say? The scripture, the scripture says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. The identifying pronoun is them. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. They Amen. shall lay hands on the sick. Who? Yes. Them. them. And who will recover? Amen. The person that is sick Amen. will recover. Amen. Amen. And I can remember some time ago, <laughs> visiting preachers couldn't even lay hands on <laughs> pastor's members. No, 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 no. If anything laying hands on, I'll, I'll do the laying on of hands. <laughs> but the scripture says, these, are, these signs will follow them that believe. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and a lot of times you don't need somebody to pray for you. Right. A lot of times you need to change some actions. Amen. It has, uh, in, in my family, on my mother's side, uh, there was a condition that kind of went through the family where it affected the kidneys 
of, of certain members of the family. And my mother had one brother. They didn't know it all of his life. He only had one kidney. And I had a cousin who lost both of her kidneys, and she was on dialysis for years. And uh, one of my examinations, the doctor t told me, and in, in, in one of the tests, they said, one of your kidneys, you got this, they give a terminology, you got this kidney disease. And you see, when, they, <clears throat> when the doctors tell you you have a disease, that doesn't mean it's a death disease. Amen. That's just how they identify it. Amen. Amen. They told me I have a heart disease. Amen. Because I've experienced congestive heart failure. So, uh, my last visit to the doctor, uh, my family doctor, my provider, and he was going through the he was going through the tests and going through the charts, and he says, and and you you have uh, uh, heart you have this heart disease. And when I went to my cardiologist, my cardiologist said, well, you know, you don't have to take this echo every year now. So your heart is normal. He said, it's just an overkill. An overkill to take this test. And that test costs thousands of dollars. Fortunately, we, we have insurance. Yes. Amen. And I pay a, you know, a small fee, you know, a, a, a co-pay. I pay a small fee. Amen. But the cardiologist said, you know, it's, it's no point in you. Uh, now, I've had two cardiologists, and both of them has retired. <laughs> and this younger doc, the cardiologist is the one saying it. He said, it's just an overkill. You don't have to take that thing every year. Just visit my office once a year. Amen. Amen. And if anything arises, you can call the office and come in and see me, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. But your heart is normal. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Your heart is normal. Amen. It just has some age on it. <laughs> it has some age on it. I can't get out and run three miles like I used to. Amen. But still, my heart is normal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. So <laughs> we have to change our actions. So I was dealing with this thing, and I had a pain back in my back area where the kidney was. And I was, you know, talking with the Lord about, and then you know what the Holy Spirit said? He said, go get you some, some uh, beet juice <laughs> and drink beet juice. I began to drink beet juice, and the pain began to disappear. I didn't realize. And I went to, you know, the Internet to find out how good is, what is, what is beet juice good for? Beet juice is good for your kidneys. Amen? I found that out from the Holy Spirit and from research. Yes. Glory to Jesus. So, so sometimes we just need to change some actions. Yes. Now listen to me. Does the Holy Spirit know all of these things? Does God know all of these things? Yes. Does God know more than the doctors? Yes, yes he does, but God is not going to kill all the doctors so you can trust him. Yes. <laughs> He's, he's not, he's not going to tell you to stop going to the doctor. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need the doctors. Amen. Just like, you know, when the George Floyd incident, the brutally, you know, was responsible for the man's death. Yes. You know, the people, you know, mad with the police department. They threw all the policemen in the same bag and want to defund the police department. Yes. Want to get rid of the police. You, know, you don't want to get rid of the police department. Yes. What are you going to do when somebody breaks into your house? What are you going to do when somebody stick you up? Who are you going to call? The police department has been educated in a, to a certain degree in criminology. Yes. Amen. They know some stuff about how to deal with people rather than we do. Yes. Amen. The best, most of us don't know nothing but, you know, you rob me, I'm going to bust your head. So we need the police. Listen, the governments of the world is God's permission yes. for rebels yes. 
Amen. So we need the policemen. Pray for them. Amen. They need our prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. I think all of this fits into my message this morning. Amen. We have an, I want you to know that you have an advantage. You're not at a disadvantage. I don't care what you're experiencing. Now, let's go to the scriptures uh, in St. John chapter 16, where Jesus made this statement to the disciples. And when he said what he said, when he told them about him going away, sorrow struck them because they had been with him. And, and Jesus said, you have been with me from the beginning. That is from the beginning of his ministry. He began his ministry at the age around 30. And he called those disciples not very long afterwards. And he named, gave them the name apostles because they had a special assignment. There was certain things that he wanted them to do. And he equipped them to do it. He gave them the right to, to the use of his name. Amen. Amen. And he said, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, etc., etc. And they went and did that. Now this was before they had received the Holy Spirit. But now in this 16th chapter, Jesus said something that didn't go too well with them. Not that they were angry with him, but they didn't know why this was going to be an advantage. In the King James Version, in the King James Version, the word expedient is used. Yes. Nevertheless, verse 7, verse 7, chapter 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage, or it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Now, in the Amplified Version, it says, however, and this gives a little more description of what this word expedient or advantage means. Now, we're going to look at this in a, in a little deeper manner as we examine the definition of this word, amen, and we see that Jesus is telling them what the Holy Spirit is going to do in addition to who he is. Because you see, the Holy Spirit is 100% God. <laughs> now, this 100% of God, the fullness of this being is not manifested in us. He's in us, but he's not the fullness of his, his being in power is not manifested in us because really we don't need it. God doesn't waste power. He doesn't waste anything. You remember when Jesus fed the multitude and he said, gather up the fragments so that nothing is lost? He doesn't waste his power. Amen? Hallelujah. And there are, there are certain conditions has to be in place before his power is manifested. Now here's what we need to really understand. We have authority in the name of the Lord Jesus to act as a representative of him, but you can't act in that representation anytime you want to. Amen. You can get in trouble trying to do that. Yes. Amen. So Jesus said, I'm telling you the truth. Let me, excuse me. I want to read this in the Amplified. However, I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say it's profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby, will not come to you. Into, he will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Close fellowship. Now, I think that here is where we many times can be lacking because we won't supply that intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit that he wants to have with us. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit wants more of your time. Yes, yes, yes. 
He wants us to listen to him more than what we do. Amen. He's our teacher. Amen. So if you don't listen to your teacher, how is he going to teach you? Amen. He's our guide. Yes. If we don't follow him, how are we going to be guided? Amen. See, he, the Holy Spirit knows the matters of the kingdom. We don't. Yes. This is new to us. Yes. We've never been kingdom-minded before. We never we became kingdom people when we got when we got born again. Amen. So now we're living a new life. Yes. So we have to listen to the one that knows everything about this life that we're living. And the Holy Spirit is the only one that knows the things of God, the deep things of God. Yes. And Jesus said he'll take her for his mind and declare it to you because everything the Father has is mine. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if it's Jesus, it's mine. Hallelujah. We have the advantage. Why? Because the greater one is in us. Amen. Amen. Now, are we, are we really taking the advantage? Say yes. yes. We're learning to. Yes. Come on. Yes. We're learning to take advantage. Yes. God will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it that you stand up under it. Amen. Can I say to you this morning, God has measured out a limit as to what Satan can do. Amen. Amen. He has put a leash on him. Because if it wasn't for God's great love, Satan will overwhelm humanity with his evilness. Yes, yes, amen. But just like God said to the sea, you can come so further, but you can't you can come so far, but you can't go any further. Yes. Hallelujah. Satan can come so far, and he can't go beyond that. But in that limitation, you have to stand against him. Yes. Because he will harass you in your mind. Your mind. Everybody said, think. 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 You, you, you need to go through the scriptures and find out what the scripture has to say about thinking. Yes. Yes. Thank you, if, you're in, if you're incarcerated in your thinking, you're in prison. Yes. Yes. Don't, listen, don't think differently of yourself than what the scripture says. Don't listen to your feelings about it. Yes. There are a lot of people there are a lot of people feel bad about themselves because they think bad about themselves. I was listening to, I, wouldn't, I didn't hear the show, but there was a, Dr. Phil had a case on, I believe it was yesterday, I don't know whether it was recent or not, but this young person feels like, she felt like she was a burden to her family. Do you realize that young people commit suicide because they feel like they're worthless? If you're worth anything, you're worth life. Amen. And young people, that, that, social media, social media can be good and it can be dangerous. Yes. Yes. I, I was, they had this young girl on trial because they said she was the result of her boyfriend committing suicide yes. because she texted him and told him. I don't know what all she told him. But anyway, it was a, a gave him a tendency to commit suicide. Yes. Anybody telling you you're less than what you are, don't listen to them. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, Amen. people try to trick you into getting involved in conversation on 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 on, on in your text. I don't think I don't have I don't have Facebook. All I have is a text application that I can text messages, but I put Facebook down a long time ago. Yes. Amen. Because I, when it first came out, I had Facebook on the TV. And then I began to see stuff on Facebook that I didn't want to be listening right. looking at. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. People showing you you're under their bodies, and yes. under their clothes. You know, you don't have to look at it. But, you know, you open up an application 
You don't know what's behind it. You open up a link, bang. You've seen it, that's it. You don't have to continue looking. Just one peek is enough to defile your conscience. And I don't want to be looking at all that stuff. Amen. So I don't open up no kind of link unless I know who it's from. As a matter of fact, I don't answer the telephone now unless I know who's calling. Amen. Amen. So if you send me a text, make sure you identify yourself. (laughs) Amen. Otherwise, you won't hear from me. I got to protect my mind. Listen, you got to protect your mind. Lord, I tell you, I'm not going to go into details on what I have accidentally seen by opening up a link. Hallelujah. All right. You have the advantage because the greater one is living in you. Now let's make sure we take the advantage. In John, 1 John 4, 4, he says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, what advantage will we have from the Holy Spirit's coming? What will his, what will is his coming result in? John 16, verse 13 through 15 says, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. See, the Holy Spirit's coming. See, under the old covenant, I mean from all the way from uh, Genesis 3.17, humanity had a problem. And I say from Genesis 3.17 because from Genesis 3.16, it's where Adam and Adam made the deadly decision to disobey God by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Satan became the God of this world. He turned his authority over to Satan. And he put all of his seed that was in him in bondage. Adam did it. Paul says he was sold into sin. Adam sold us out. But Jesus came to redeem us. And that is to buy us back with his blood. Glory to God. And listen. What did Jesus do? He put us back into the place that Adam fell from. Adam was king. Adam was the ruler of the earth. He was the ruler. God said, let them, that is Adam, mankind, let them have dominion over the earth. He had it. And then Jesus comes along and he's tempted by Satan And Satan promises to give him the authority, and he says to him, I can give it to whom I will because it's been given to me. Jesus didn't deny it. He didn't say, oh, Satan, I know you're just lying. Jesus himself said Satan is the God of this world. And he wants to rule every person on this planet. Don't let him rule you. Don't let him rule you through ignorance. Get a knowledge of who you are in the Lord Jesus. Get a knowledge of what you have. Get a knowledge of your rights as a believer in the body of Christ. That's important to you. Because your success in life is going to be determined by the degree of the knowledge that you have. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The Holy Spirit will put an end to the age-old problem of God's people during the Old Covenant time. They knew the prophets, they knew the king, they knew the priests, but they didn't know these people's God. That's all they knew. They knew whoever was the priest, whoever was the king, whoever the prophet, they knew them. And when they wanted a word, they had to go to the prophet. Even the king had to go to the prophet. The priest had to go to the prophet. The priest was the figure of representation. When they wanted to make an offering, they had to go to the priest to do it. When they wanted to get some direction, they had to go to the prophet. Isn't that something? 
Now, that was the best that was in place for them. But that puts you at a disadvantage. Now, what if the priest stopped walking with God? Amen. What if the prophet stops walking? What if the king stops walking with God and the king is the one that's going to protect you because he is the one that fights the battle? Not individually, but he is the one that commands the armies. Now, what if he's not walking with God? He doesn't have God's presence. If the priest isn't walking with God, he doesn't have God's presence. If the prophet isn't walking with God, he doesn't have God's presence. So you're at a disadvantage. But glory to God when you can come into his presence. Woo! Watch out now. <laughs> when you can come into God's presence yourself. When you can't find nobody. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes a helper isn't available. Sometimes you can't get nobody. But the Holy Spirit is living in you. Oh, Oh, glory to Jesus. You have the advantage. You, listen, you got the advantage. You got the advantage. You hear me? I say, you got the advantage. Ooh. Hallelujah. Now, that's a personal word to you. You have the advantage. Hmm. Ooh. Glory to Jesus. Can I just dismiss it going home or do you want me to go? <laughs> Hallelujah. That puts us to an advantage no matter what we may be facing in life. If, if we will follow his directions. In order for the Holy Spirit to guide you, you got to follow his directions. In order for the Holy Spirit to teach you, you gotta, you got to make demands upon it. you got to position yourself. you got to give yourself to him. See, because he's not going to, can I use this expression? He's not going to take you over. Amen. Taking over can be against your will. Yes. He's not going to take you over against your will. He's going to only take what you give to him. But he wants to give you more than you can ask for. Let's take a look at this old covenant that was God was going to put an end to. In the book of Hebrews chapter 8. I'm going to go on because my time is coming to a close. In Hebrews chapter 8 verse 7, you can catch it with me when you find it. He says, for if the first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their mind. See, when you got it in your mind, it can, it can influence you to think right. In their minds and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor. Or it won't be necessary. Now, this is not an absolute statement that nobody's going to teach you. You're going to have teachers. Yeah. But whereas the people didn't have this inward teacher, you're going to have him. Amen. You've got the teacher living in you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. Amen. Amen. See, the old covenant people didn't have this inward dwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So they, they had to, they had to uh, uh, depend upon those who were anointed. Yes. 
See, under the old covenant, the king, the prophet, and the priest were the only one that was anointed. You remember when the tabernacle was being set up and the plans were being put in place for the worship of God, for public worship, Aaron had to be anointed to do what he did. He had to be anointed with this special uh, uh, apothecary uh, ointment that has been prepared, which is a type of the Holy Spirit. He was a high priest, and his sons were priests under him that handled the offerings. Aaron was the one that took the blood into the holies of holies. His boys were the ones that took the offerings, the burnt offerings, and put them on the altars, the sacrifices. They had to have the anointing. But now, glory to God. Woo! Everybody has the anointing. Everybody in the body of Christ has the anointing. But you don't have it in the same degree. You are anointed according to your purpose. <laughs> I'm preaching up a sweat here. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Everybody say the anointing. The Holy Spirit is the one that releases the anointing. My teacher is the anointed one. Come on. And what does he anoint you to do? To do whatever you need to do out of the respect of the office that you stand in. And as a member of the body of Christ, you can lay hands on the sick. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Now, let's, let's, I didn't do it before. I got less than nine minutes to do it. But I want us to take a look at this word, expedient or advantage. Yes. I want us to, let's go to, uh, Webster, Webster says this word expedient means means it's suitable for achieving a particular end in a given circumstance. Now this is what Jesus is saying to the disciples. It's going to be advantageous to you because it's going to make you suitable for achieving a particular end in a given circumstance. That's what Webster says. Now let's look at what it means in the Greek. The word expedient or advantage is sum ferro. And this word sum is together. There is a, see, there is a working together. See, we're working with the Holy Spirit. Listen, you're not working for God. You're working with him. And since you're working with him, that means you're working under his direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do what he, you, you get directions from him as to what he wants you to do. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you can help spread this message, you can help spread this gospel by asking the Father, who do you want me to send the video to? Amen. Ask him, who do you want, just don't send it to random to who you think, because it might not, some people don't want the truth. So ask the Holy Spirit, who do you want me to send the video of, of the ministries that we are getting here at Lansing Christian Center? It's going over, it's, it's going through in Arkansas. It's going through in Alabama. It's going through in Georgia. North Carolina. North Carolina. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And it's going to be going through in Texas. In a little while, amen, we get it, we get it, we get in the message of the kingdom out. And the message of the kingdom brings you liberty. Amen. I one, at one time, I have a brother who was a pastor in Arkansas, and uh, he said, I, I, I want to get the messages. And I was, you know, when I got the link, I would, you know, send it to him. And then, come to find out, I found out that you don't have to send the link. You can just tell them if you have access to YouTube, Amen. you can go to YouTube and pull up every ministry that has come forth from this building. Amen. 
Amen. So I told him, I have a nephew down there. He wanted the message. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have a cousin down there. He wants the message. Amen. Amen. So I said, you got YouTube? And you can be right on YouTube. You can be right on the phone with him. Tell him, get YouTube up. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's get the gospel out. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter how many is how many is in here is not important. That's not the important thing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Now, let's take a look at what this word in the Greek means. Remember, Jesus is telling them who he is. Yes, he's telling them who he is, but he's also telling them when he comes, what he's going to do. The Holy Spirit has an assignment just as Jesus had an assignment. And his assignment, Jesus' assignment, was to bring redemption. The Holy Spirit's assignment is to help the redeemed live out the redemptive life and to carry on and advance the message that Jesus begun. So this word, expedient, or advantage, is sumphero, together. And it says it means to, listen, to bear together. The Holy Spirit is going to bear together with you. He's going to take hold with you. When you are under a burden, when you are under pressure, you're not under that pressure alone. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. Amen. Listen, and listen, what more help do you need than the Holy Spirit? Amen. If we can learn how to Embrace what he's. This is such a delicate, this is such a delicate situation until we can miss it. The Holy Spirit is such a delicate person. He's such a gentle person. And Paul tells us in Ephesians, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. The, listen, the least resistance you give to the Holy Spirit, he stops. When he's moving in your direction and when he's giving you something, your least resistance, he stops. But he doesn't withdraw from you forever. He'll stop until you're ready to embrace. And he stops and he stays in that position, ready to come back. Once you open up to him again. Hallelujah. So listen, pray, for, pray to the Father. Father, I thank you for helping me to be op open to the Holy Spirit and to be receptive you see, because we are, you, <laughs> let me say it like this, we are complex people. And because we know what negativism is, that negativism can interfere with what the Holy Spirit wants to do in us. So we have to recognize that and, 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 and embrace God's help so that he can help us overcome our negativism. Amen? Hallelujah. And it means to contribute. He's going to contribute something to you. There is a collection also in this. He's going to conduce, especially, and it says especially, and he gives you the various forms that these words is in. And I'm not going to get into all of that in the Greek. Amen. <laughs> Because there are some forms of these words in the Greek that's not in our English language. Amen. But here's what, here's what further the Holy Spirit is going to do. He's going to carry. Now this is in the word Pharaoh. He's going to carry. He's going to carry you. He's going to help you carry some burden. He's going to, when you are moved by, he's going to move you by bearing. Carrying you along, according to a less frequent use, to bear up, to uphold. He's going to uphold. Listen, when Peter was in jail, facing execution, James had already been killed with the sword. And the scripture says, because they saw it pleases the people, Pharaoh, of uh, the king was going to take Peter's life. So he had Peter bound. Peter had already made an escape once before. So he put extra, extra security around the jail. He had Peter chained between two people inside the jail. 
and then he had guards outside the prison door to make sure if he got away from them inside, he wouldn't get away from those outside. Amen? He wanted to make sure Peter didn't get away. But what did God do? Whew. He sent an angel. And listen, but that's what, what I want to emphasize. What was Peter doing when that angel showed up in the jail? Peter was asleep. Now listen, he had to have some kind, some kind of composure to be sleeping when he was going to lose his head the next day. He was sleeping. But what was happening? The Holy Spirit had brought this, had was bearing this man up. Woo! Glory to God. That he could sleep. And tomorrow going to lose my head. Well, I'm going to get me a good life sleep tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Did you get anything out of this? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we have the advantage. If we will take it. It's yours for the taking. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you for those of you who have been joining with us by YouTube. Thank you for being a part of this service today. Trust that you will be with us in our next service times. And as we sign off for today, may God's best be yours. Amen.